Yo, welcome back to the channel, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate the support we continue to get, which is awesome. Make sure you keep liking, following, and subscribing. We appreciate all the love here, Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. Um, we'll give you a friendly reminder a little later as well. So today we are going to begin talking about one of the subjects we're passionate about, and that's going to be comic books. So I wanted to make a quick video just about... Um, one of my favorite series right now are story arcs that's happening, and that is Dawn of X for the X-Men. So uh, most of you guys know who the X-Men are. And if uh, I want to say the world knows who the X-Men are, but you definitely have a favorite X-Man. Um, most people would say Wolverine would qualify into that. Uh, a lot of casual people definitely would go that route. Um, he is pretty awesome. But uh, you've either been introduced to the X-Men either through comic books um, movies, you know, Fox did, did a good job of promoting those movies early on, and we've seen various iterations of what the X-Men can look like on screen. Um, or if you're like me, I was first introduced to the X-Men with the X-Men animated series, which is an awesome show that still holds up today. Shout out to Disney Plus for actually putting it on there to binge watch. Um, definitely a great show to watch, and if you haven't seen it, check it out. So the X-Men have been around for a very long time, um, decades really, and they've been popular for a very, very long time. But recently, and when I say recently, within the last 10 to 12 months, uh, Marvel decided to relaunch the X-Men, and they did so with a miniseries event, um, which is called House of X and Powers of X, uh, six issues of each series uh, that intertwine very well together. You kind of have to read them both to figure out what's going on. Um, as the launching point or the launching pad of what the X-Men is going to be in their introduction into um, the Marvel Universe right now in the comics. So we wanted to uh, have that conversation for those that haven't deep um, dug deep yet into what uh, this story arc is or even those that have never really even read a comic book because I understand there's people out there that it's not their thing, but if there's ever a time to jump into a storyline, um, it's this. Uh, this storyline is pretty cool the way that they did it. Uh, to not forget or discount anything that's happened in the history of the X-Men, um, but kind of acknowledge it and, and move on. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, here shortly. So before we get ahead of ourselves, um, this is going to be a video about my reactions, not of the entire Dawn of X series so far, because there are a ton of them and I own every last one of them. We'll have a video about um, different variant covers and, and all the different ones that I've had and what I like and don't like from that on. But we're mainly going to talk about is the launch pad or what is House of X and Powers of X. Um, and two main points, really. The first one is going to be Professor Xavier, just because he's different, like completely different from what you're used to. And we'll dig a little deep into that. And the second one is Moira, Moira McTaggart. Um, you've seen her different iterations. You've also seen um, just different viewpoints. If, you read, if you've read the comics, she's had different um, impacts on the X-Men, but this one is very interesting. So we're gonna go ahead and have a conversation about those two main points. I don't wanna spoil too much. Inevitably, I'm going to. Um, just because it's tied to what I want to talk about. But the purpose of this is to get people excited that haven't read the X-Men or any comic in general, or if you do read comic books, to entice you to check out um, Dawn of X so far, because it's really been pretty good. All right, so let's start. Um, we're going to start with Moira and leave Professor Xavier here towards the end of the video. Um, I wanted to start with Moira for a main, a main reason, right? She is important to tell a lot of storylines for the X-Men and important to Professor Xavier specifically. But what they've done with Moira is they have given her um, something truly unexpected. I know it's been out for a year, so if, you, if you're reading it, obviously comment and, and let's talk about it. Let's see what you think and what your feelings are. But they made Moira a mutant. And so they gave her a specific ability. So she's able to reincarnate multiple times. Um... What's cool about this reincarnation is that it can happen in any point in time. So when one of her lives ends, she can reincarnate 
into a hundred years in the future, a thousand years in the future, or into the past. Another amazing part of what her ability is is she's able to remember exactly what happened in her lifetime. So this leads her to have um, different attempts, right? And some some are good, some are bad, and I'm not going to get into many of those because I want you to read it, um, and we can have a, a discussion about it later, or in a chat, or you know, in the comment section. But uh, those different lives influence um, what she wants to do. Um, so you go to the future, you come back to the past, you live in the present. She has 11 lives, um, and we're we're able to see in House of X number two, um, the uncanny life of Moira, what happened in those nine lives before. So her 10th life is the present timeline, which the story is going to follow going after this launch pad or this starting point. But you're able to see life one through nine and what happens in those lives. And in this time frame, they explore the different X-Men storylines that have happened, or the important ones anyways. So they're not ignoring House of M. Um, they're not ignoring different plot lines that have happened. They acknowledge them as happening in one of Moira's lives, but because she's able to reincarnate, she can then come back and change everything that happens, which she does, right? She she definitely does that a couple of times. On her 10th life though, she decides, I'm gonna tell Xavier what's going on because I wanna prevent um, something that's happening in the future and that we're not going to get into. Um, so she does and and that she allows Xavier to see um, her memories and he's able to see her memories of all of her past lives and what happened to each of them or to her and each of them. Um, so he believes it and they go to Magneto and they talk about that and that's really interesting to me. I mean, Moira's always a a secondary character, always around, important to, to multiple things, and kind of involved in some lines. But for the most part, um, this gives her so much more value. And um, she's kind of a, at the nexus of what's going to happen now in that Marvel Universe because of the actions that she took telling Xavier everything that happened. Um, it changes everything. It changes everything for you know, the X-Men for sure. And it's going to have major implications on the rest of the Marvel Universe as we go. And I think we're starting to already see that with the Fantastic Four, even Empire. There's a couple um, storylines there, you know, a couple one shots with giant um, sized X-Men as well. So it's starting to really build in, which I think is awesome. And I'm really hoping that they take this storyline and this is the way they introduce it into the MCU at some point. Um, that way they have a lot more liberty and freedom to do what they want to do and aren't tied to any specific old um, storylines uh, that people like me would be like, yeah, that doesn't that didn't happen. Um, so that's Moira. And I think it's really cool how they use their, you definitely have to read, you know, especially House of X number two, uh, that goes through, or even, you know, Wikipedia, if you want to cheat, I don't recommend that. But um Check out her lives, everything that happens, everything that goes through. And and in some of her lives, she was heavily influenced and, and angry. So that comes back to the core. Um, so she did a lot of good. She did some things that are a little regrettable. And now we're just in, in the present where she informs Xavier and Magneto of what's to come. And we need to work together to prevent it. Um, so let's move on to Professor Xavier because this is a little bit more complicated. So you remember Professor X or Xavier as a pacifist. He definitely is depicted that way in the movies. If you only know the X-Men through the movies, it's for sure how, how you remember him. Things change, though. Once Myra shows him um, her different lives, which he's involved in a lot of them, right? She, they've always been kind of connected and, and go through things together. But he's able to see that what he's been doing isn't working. They still get to what he fears at the end. And that's ultimately, you know, mutant extinction or the verge of extinction. Um, so this changes something in Xavier. Changes a lot of things. His belief system is kind of uh, ruptured now, right? He's He aligns himself more with Magneto's line of thinking now where what we do... Um, as a superior race, we should take control of this planet and other things and really lead the way as a superior species. 
Um, so it's a radical change for Xavier. It's something that, you know, he really hasn't been uh, for the most part. I mean, there's some, some one-off things as, as Onslaught and things like that. But for the most part, he is a pacifist. And now he goes from from doing that right to putting all his efforts into avoiding this future that Moira has showed him. Um, and what's that going to take? It's going to take alliances they've never done, right? So now um, he and Magneto are on the same page. And uh, when they decide to use Krakoa, the mutant island, um, as their home and become a nation, it gets wild, man. Now they have a government. They have a form of currency. They have a language. Um, they have a military defense system. They have spies. I, they're legit from one day to the other a nation that has medicine that other countries can't get, and that's how they use to, to get leverage. Um, but his change is a little odd. For one, uh, he kind of resembles the Maker, which is um, Reed Richards from An Alternate Earth. Uh, goes kind of nuts. His suit is the same. His helmet is the same. Well, it's not exactly the same, but very, very similar. Um, the way they walk is similar. So there's a couple things I ask myself. Is is this really Xavier? Because it's very out of character for the most part. Like, it doesn't seem like it's him. There are moments in those first 12 books um, that it kind of seems like he's manipulating or mind controlling some of his fellow mutants that live on this island with him in their nation. Um, I honestly hope that it's not tied to him, uh, to the maker for the simple fact that I think it gives him more depth. If it really is Xavier, he just had a change of thought, right? You get pushed so many times, eventually you start changing the way you do things and that's kind of more real. And that what, that's what Marvel is to me. It's more based in reality for me. That's why I prefer it. I don't, I don't dislike DC, but I think that's a really good thing, um, to do, but they're making allies uh, that you wouldn't expect. You know, they make allies with Apocalypse, <laughs> uh, with Mister Sinister. Um, Mystique obviously goes where wherever Magneto is for the most part. But now, instead of being the Brotherhood and the X Men, now they're one nation in Krakoa, working together to become elite. They be basically become the elitist and are under under the understanding that they belong not only do they belong but everything they should inherit because they are the better species um it makes me it makes professor xavier very dangerous and also protected there's a lot of other things that go in here uh, the island itself is a mutant so that helps a ton with its own language um they figured out a way to bring back mutants that might have passed away so many things happen, y'all, and I think this is a really good opportunity to to jump in just because you don't necessarily need to know much of the past because they recap it in, in that issue uh, with Moira, at least the, the highlights. Um, but going forward, you have a good opportunity now to jump into the Marvel Universe uh, through a new perspective and through the mutants being something, or at least the X-Men being something that they truly... Um, weren't really before even even in avengers versus x-men right that was a, a different type of concept but this is more like are they the villains is professor xavier the villain it kind of feels that way sometimes like dude are you are you doing what you're doing right now like does that even make sense to you end of the day yo the purpose of this is if you haven't picked up a comic book at all or if you haven't in a long time i think this is a good series to really get into there's so many different arcs um, you have New Mutants, which honestly is my least favorite, uh, X-Force, Excalibur, Excalibur is actually really cool, Fallen Angels is pretty cool, um, Giant Size X-Men I mentioned earlier, what else do we have, um, Wolverine has a new comic, which is pretty cool, so I feel like you definitely want to jump into this at least read that mini series those 12 issues and then judge for yourself and let's talk about it so i'm gonna leave uh right here or right here don't know which side yet um the recommended reading order for what you should do with this and you do need to read both of them i know a lot of people ask well do i need to read house of x and powers of x yes you do one explains more um 
the power side of it and most of them are in the future and the other explains what we're doing in the present as well as Moira's effect on everyone around them. So hopefully you like this video, y'all. I'm putting um, some thought into our next one. I'm very excited about Dawn of X where I want to say I'm about 80 something issues in right now across all of the um, different titles that exist, but we're going to keep reading them and uh, hopefully bring you some more videos on them because I know some pretty wicked stuff has happened since then, but I don't want to jump to that section without introducing our audience um, to it initially. And uh, if you have read it, let's talk about it in the comments. Let me know what you think about Professor Xavier and how they've utilized Moira so far um, in this miniseries. Let's not get too ahead because in the future we'll make videos around what that looks like. So thanks for stopping by, y'all. Again, make sure you like, follow, comment across all social media platforms, Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, as well as here on YouTube so that it helps a ton. We've built this page out of love and out of commitment to making things happen. Um, and we promise we will slowly but surely. We're going to be pumping out a couple videos a week. Appreciate the support. Thanks for watching and listening and uh, hope to see you here next time. See ya. Those birds! No!